It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Oh, Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Day 11. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. Here's my good word for today. It's about a honey of a new cereal, Post Sugar Crisp. And it's my hunch you'll like it just as much as we do out here at the Double R Bar Ranch. You see, Post Sugar Crisp is just downright good eating. And it's good so many different ways. Try it real soon, won't you? And now, since we're all at the World's Championship Rodeo in Madison Square Garden at New York, here's a rip-roaring rodeo yarn. <laughs> We think of cowboys as part of the West, happy there and never wanting to be anywhere else. But when the wild geese start to honk their way south, every cowboy gets a yearning to travel east to the world's championship rodeo in New York's Madison Square Garden. There, the ridingest, ropingest, wranglingest cow waddies in all the cattle country match their skill and brawn against the sunfishingest Bronx, the orneriest steers, and the burliest Brahma Bulls for the honor, glory, and fabulous cash prizes that go to the top punchers. Look at that cowboy stick to the drum! Well, what is he doing? He doesn't even have a saddle. And the winner of the bareback bronc riding contest in this performance is the mystery rider who wants to be known just as the foreman of the Double R Bar Ranch. <laughs> He sure did, Freddy. Watch him now. He's going to wrestle that big bruiser. Pull him down, cowboy. Pull him down. The steer was down in six and two-tenths seconds, folks. That's the best time tonight. And here's your winner, Vicky Hiker of Smoky River. Oh, oh the man's thrown already. Sure, that's the toughest brain of bull in the rodeo. Nobody can ride Toro Tornado. Jack, that brain is charging the man. Get up! Oh, get up! Scramble for that fence, puncher! Run for it! Those are some of the rodeo contests. Thrills, chills, spills, and danger. And between the contests, some more thrills for the patrons who jam the Madison Square Garden seats for every performance. For the spotlights, pick out a lovely girl riding a beautiful light buckskin horse and a light, wiry, smiling young man on his golden palomino, Dale Evans and Roy Rogers. Shoot! Bullseye! Shoot! Bullseye! His six guns go blazing away! Say, you practically stole a show. Golly, Roy and Dale, you sure knocked them on their ear out there tonight. Five encores. Well, you did pretty well yourself, Pat. 17,000 people laughing at one time must sound pretty good to you. <laughs> oh, they love me here in New York. Broadway <laughs> Brady, they call me. Well, let's go up to watch the saddle bronc riding. Say, how's Jerry Green done so far, Pat? Well, he won himself some more points. You should have seen him in that calf rope in 12 and 3 tenths seconds. Why, that's close to a record. Jerry, come on over here. Say, that was sensational time you made tonight. Shucks, I was just lucky. Anything I can do for you, Roy? No, thanks, Jerry. Just keep on riding and roping the way you are, and you'll leave New York with about $15,000. You bet, Jerry. You're almost a cinch to win the all-round cowboy championship of the world. <laughs> well, a lot can happen in two days. But if I do win, I, I owe it to Roy. 
Jerry, you were the best pupil a cowpuncher ever had. I still wish he had entered as plain Jerry Green instead of as foreman of the Double R Bar Ranch. Now, we've been all through that, Roy. I don't care about having my name splashed all over the papers. I'm just shooting for the 15000 bucks so I can exercise my option on that spread up in the north end of Paradise Valley. Yeah, I guess it's good country, all right, because a, a man I've never seen before offered to buy my option tonight for $1,000 more than I paid for it. What? Sure enough. The uh, fellow's a New Yorker. He introduced himself as Mr. Lally. Hmm. Get ready for the Saddle Rock riding event. All entrants up to the shoes. Well, that's me. Uh, see you later, folks. Okay. What bronc are you riding, Jerry? Uh, still my lucky day. I drew hijinks. Mm. Oh, boy, Jerry. Well, here's where you get some more points toward that grand championship. That hijinks horse couldn't throw you if you rode him standing on your hands in the saddle. You sure are lucky, Jerry. The horse is mighty flashy, but... His style just fits your style of riding. Sure, hijinks is tough, but he isn't spooky. Well, good luck to you, boy. We'll be at the chutes watching you. Well, Cleland, it didn't work. Green wouldn't take our offer. You don't suppose he's wise to how much the property's worth to you? Oh, well, that's impossible, Mike. Our surveyor was working alone when he found the gold load there, and... His telegram has been in my back pocket ever since we got it. Well, what do we do next? Offer Green more for his option? Not a cent more. I've checked the kid very carefully. If he doesn't win the grand championship prize money, he can't possibly exercise his option. Well, then all we have to do is see that he doesn't win the championship. Yeah. Looks like you'll have to put on your phony veterinary act, Cleland. I'm way ahead of you, Mike. I've been down to the Bronx pens already. I told the handlers I was hired as a special vet, and none of them gave me a tumble. Fine. And you're ready to start operating tomorrow, Tomorrow. Huh? I've started operating as of the next event. I slipped a dose of the stuff to the bronc Jerry Green's going to ride. And when he slides into that saddle, he'll find he's up on a half a ton of pure dynamite. You sure Green won't be able to stick on the horse? He won't be able to stick on, and after the bronc throws him, he'll be lucky to get out of the arena alive. When the dose takes effect, that hijinks horse will be a killer. And when it wears off, it'll be impossible to detect it. <laughs> Now, I want you to meet three mighty special pals of Roy's, the three Sugar Crisp Bears. They're the ones you see right on the front of every package of Post Sugar Crisp. And here they are to tell you about the fastest growing cereal in America. That's Post Sugar Crisp. Say, you three honey bears really go for that delicious sugar and honey flavor, don't you? You bet. We love Sugar Crisp. It's the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Right. It's excitingly new and different. Better than anything else you've ever tried. What's more, you'll enjoy eating Sugar Crisp three different ways. Handy, dandy, and candy can tell you that. You said it. As a cereal, it's dandy. And for snacks, it's so handy. Or you can eat it like candy, right out of the box. Yes, like the three honey bears say, you'll love Sugar Crisp three different ways. First, as a cereal. Remember, Sugar Crisp is already sweetened. All you have to do is add milk or cream. You don't need any sugar. And for snacks, Sugar Crisp is so quick and easy to fix any time you're hungry. Or you can eat it right out of the package like candy. It's the grandest treat you ever did eat. Like the three honey bears say. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Tomorrow, take home the genuine Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on the front. Roy Rogers' foreman, Jerry Green, is well up in the running for the grand prize which goes to the champion cowboy at the Madison Square Garden Rodeo in New York. Jerry hopes to win the money so that he can buy a ranch in Paradise Valley. But unknown to our friends, a plot is afoot to prevent Jerry from winning. For two sinister figures stalk the garden, knowing that on the land Jerry hopes to buy, there is untold wealth in gold. Now Jerry is about to take his turn in the saddle bronc riding event. Jerry should be a cinch for this, shouldn't he, Roy? Mickey Hyger got thrown tonight. Yeah, Mickey drew a tough one. And he's the only boy here who's even given Jerry an argument. Well, if Jerry can't stay on that high jinx critter until next Christmas, he's slipping mighty bad. <laughs> You're right, Pat. I'm not worried about Jerry staying on. And now, that sensational foreman from the Roy Rogers Double R Bar Ranch, riding high jinx. <laughs> Hey, 
High Jinks is certainly full of spirit tonight. The boys in the chutes are having their hands full. Sure, but when he gets out there, he'll just tuck his little old head down and buck straight away. Why, I could darn near ride that horse. <laughs> Why, Pat, don't be so modest. If you can stick with Nellie Bell, though, the way she bounces, there certainly is no bronco that you couldn't handle. Well, Jerry's ready to mount. Good luck, Jerry. All set, fellas. Here I go. Open them up. Got him, Jerry! Hey, wait a minute. Look at that horse. Oh, what's happened? He's bucking like a brain of bull. Hey, he's sunfish and crow hopping, reaching for their clouds. Man, Roy, that horse is going crazy. Stick with him, Jerry. Well, no one could stick on a horse that's acting that way. Hey, hey, Jerry's off. Oh, no, his foot's caught in a stirrup. Roy, Jerry's in real trouble. Trigger, come here, boy. Trigger, that bronze going wild for sure. Let's help the pickup men. Be careful, Roy. Roy, watch out. After him, Trigger, boy, quick. Jerry, get loose and run for him. I'm trying, Roy, but his hook got my arm. Cut in front of him, Trigger. If I can grab that halter. There, high jinx. Steady now, boy. Steady. Hey, pickups, get Jerry out of here. I'll handle the bronze. Great work, Rogers. We're getting this horse out of the arena fast. There's something wrong with him. Study there, high jinx. You're a tough cookie, but you wouldn't be mean without a reason. Pat, Dale, come down and have a look at this bronc. Whoa there, Trigger. Whoa, high jinx. Settle down here now. Hey, a couple of you men give us a hand over here. Hey, you saved Jerry's life out there, Roy. That was wonderful. Well, Trigger did most of it. Grab this bronc bridle, Pat. Help him, fellas, till I hop down. Hey, this bruiser's local. Steady there, you. Roy, that bronc is trembling all over. And look at his eyes. What's wrong with him? Well, he's calming down a little, but he sure was spooky out there. I guess we can manage him now, Roy. Shall we take him to the stalls? We'll take him to the hospital stalls and get a veterinary's report. I'm sure this horse has been tampered with. <laughs> I just can't understand it, Roy. No one was near the bronc pens but some of the official veterinarians, and the horse tested perfectly normal 15 minutes afterward. Yeah, no, Mr. Moore. You run this rodeo as clean as a whistle. Still, there could have been a slip-up somewhere. Naturally, Roy and I are upset, on account of Jerry Green. Yeah, he stood such a great chance of winning the all-around championship money. And now with a broken arm... Wait a minute. Roy, Jerry isn't going to have to lose his chance at the top money after all. Not if you'll take his place in the events for the next two days. Well, I couldn't do that, Dale. Well, why not? You're the owner of the Double R Bar. If anything happened to the foreman back at the ranch, you'd sort of appoint yourself foreman and go out and do his work for him, wouldn't you? Well, sure, but this Well, is... then is there any reason that you can't appoint yourself foreman and ride out the events for Jerry? Dale, it would require a majority vote from the Rodeo Cowboys Association to let Roy compete. And, Mr. Moore, I've got a hunch that Jerry's accident wasn't really an accident. And for that reason, I'd certainly like to take over for him. Well, under the circumstances, I think the association will okay it. Well, first, I'd like to call a meeting of all the cowboys who have a possible chance of winning the grand prize. If they'll agree to let me compete in Jerry's place and the association will go along, I'm going to do it. <laughs> supper now, Pat. I'll wait here till Roy comes back. He and Jerry and Mickey Hyger are eating together, and they haven't finished. Well, thanks, Dale. I think I'll do that. Was well, everything under control around here? Oh, sure. One of them veterinarians went into the trailer to examine Trigger and bullet practically tore the seat out of his pants. Oh. <laughs> but I guess nothing was really hurt except his feelings. Well, why didn't you go in with him? Well, he didn't ask me, and I knew Bullet wouldn't let him get away with anything. <laughs> Which one of the vets was he? I don't know. When something goes wrong with Nellie Bell, I need a mechanic, not a vest. But but if you want to look him up, his trousers are torn, and he's with a tall, slick-looking muzzler with a black mustache. <laughs> well, he'll probably be back to collect for the damage to his suit. I'll stick around, Pat. <laughs> okay, Dale. Thanks. See you later. Bullet, what have you been up to? Come on out here and talk to me, you rascal. Well, Bullet, when you're left to guard the horses, you do just that, don't you? Hey, wait a minute. What have you got in your mouth? Give it to me. Thank you. Why, this is a telegram. Phil Cleland, 444 Madison Avenue, New York. Why, oh, I don't think I'll read this, Bullet. Maybe it dropped when you grabbed that fellow by the seat of the pants. Wait a minute. Maybe I'd better read it. Found definite signs of rich gold deposits on property optioned to Jerry Green, who is competing at Madison Square Garden Rodeo. 
have made quiet inquiries and find that Green cannot exercise option unless he wins grand championship prize money. If you can't buy option cheap, suggest whatever steps necessary to keep Green from winning. Bullet, there's gold on the ranch Jerry Green wants to buy. And if the fellow who said he was a veterinarian dropped this telegram, Bullet, you'd know him, wouldn't you? All right, Bullet. We're not going to tell Roy about this. He's got to concentrate on winning at least three of the five events tonight, and we don't want to upset him. But you and I are going to be all over Madison Square Garden until we find a man with a pocket torn out of his trousers. Tonight's winner of the calf roping event, temporary foreman of the Double R Bar Ranch, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Jerry, you never tied a calf much faster than that yourself. I should say not, Pat. Gee, it's wonderful, Roy, to step in and try to pull me through like this. Oh, he's having a good time, Jerry, and you sure can't do yourself much good with that arm in a sling. And tonight's winner in the Wild Steer Wrestling, Mickey Hiker from Smoky River. Well, uh, Mickey's a great bulldog. Roy, you won the saddle bronc and calf roping, and, and Mickey won the bulldogging and bareback bronc riding. Golly, I think that makes the points exactly even. In that case, Jerry, your $15,000 depends on whether Mickey or I can stay on one of those tough Brema bulls. I drew Toro Tornado. Toro Tornado? Oh, no. Oh, golly, Roy. He he threw me in about three jumps the other night. Well, Mickey drew blue blazes, and he looks just about as tough. Yeah, but Mickey's been riding every Bramer he's drawn since the rodeo opened, and you haven't tried it in years. Well, I have to try it now. Uh, don't, Roy. The, the ranch isn't that important to me. Hey, Jerry, I taught you to ride your first Bramer, and the professor doesn't take any back talk from his pupils. <laughs> you would have won the money for the ranch if you hadn't had a tough break, and I'm aiming to see that you still win it. <laughs> Good thing they keep the Bramers down here in the basement. No one will bother us, but we got to hurry. I thought this Toro Tornado was supposed to be such a tough bull. He's quiet enough now. As soon as I found out Rogers had drawn him, I slipped something to quiet him into his feed. Else I couldn't get close enough to give him the other stuff. Are you sure it'll work on top of the sedative? It worked on the bronc the other night, Mike. I handled him the same way. You know, Cleland, you should have been a veterinarian at that. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot about chemistry, but there are easier ways of making money. <laughs> Okay, Cleland, slip in the medicine. You bet I will. Three minutes after I give it to him, this bull will be an unmanageable killer. I just hope he doesn't go berserk before the wranglers can get him up to the chutes. No, Bullet. Quiet. I see you there. Don't move a muscle, because I don't fool when I got a gun in my hand. Where is it, Mike? It's a cowgirl. It... Hey, it's a dog that almost ripped your pants off. All right. You found us, but we found out what we want to know. Yeah, but you'll never tell anybody, lady. Hey, Cleland, hurry up. Maybe you'd like to watch me shoot a dog. Well, let go. Get out of here. Get Roy. Well, oh, well, well, well. Don't fire, Mike. The men will be down to get the bulls any moment. Yeah, but if that dog... The gets... dog can't do a thing. He's a dumb animal. All we have to do is see that the lady never opens her mouth. I'll open my mouth, all right. I know what you two are up to. I know everything. Yeah? Gag the lady, Phil. We let the bull finish off Rogers up in front of the crowd. And when they bring him back, we let him finish her off down here. <laughs> We'll return to Roy in a moment. But first, let's listen to the three Sugar Crisp Bears. We're the Sugar Crisp Bears and we want you to meet the grandest treat you ever did eat. Post Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Those three Sugar Crisp Bears really know a good thing when they taste it. Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat. That's why it's fast getting to be America's favorite cereal. You see, Sugar Crisp is already sweetened with honey and sugar, so you'll just eat it with milk or cream. And it's so handy for snacks any time you feel like sitting down to some good, nourishing eating. Or eat it just like candy. Get genuine Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on it. It's a honey of a new cereal. <laughs> Thank you.
Roy Rogers is poised above the chute, ready to ride Toro Tornado in the final rodeo event at Madison Square Garden. He does not know that Cleland and Lally have captured Dale and given the huge Brema a substance that will loose ungovernable killer instincts. Hey! Hey, here he comes. Wow, it's taken eight or ten men to get him in his chute. He looks mighty rough and mighty mad. Well, he threw me in a hurry last Tuesday, and he was acting like a gentleman by comparison. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the braver that hasn't been ridden during the entire rodeo and attempting to stay with him, Roy Rogers. Watch that chute now, folks. I'm ready, Pat. Yeah, I know, Roy, but... Roy, if you want to back out, nobody will care. They'll understand. Oh, I couldn't do that, Pat. I'm riding it, I hope. Good luck, Roy. Well, thanks, Jerry. All right, men. The bull's ready, I am. And there he goes! <laughs> Stay on him, Roy! Pat, that Brema's crazy. Worse than the horse that threw me. He's boiling over. He's fence-worming. Now he's windmilling. Oh, Jerry, I can't watch. Well, you'd better, because you'll never see better riding. Roy's still on that bull. And it's like riding a cyclone with a bridle off. Stay with him, Roy! Folks, that's the first time anyone stayed with Toro Tornado during the run of the rodeo. Oh, there, he's off. And the pickup men are after the bull. And Roy's heading back here. <laughs> hey, Pat. What's the matter with Bull? Roy, how'd you ever do it? You rode him. Jerry wins. He's got the points. Well, never mind that now. Where's Dave? Gosh, I, I haven't seen her. I think Bullet has, and I think there's trouble. Come on. All right, Bullet, lead us to Dale. The crowd's plenty steamed up about something up there. <laughs> the Bremen must have cut Rogers to ribbons. How can you do that? Oh, well, the lady wants to say something. Take the gag off, Mike. Uh, okay, for just a second. I'm warning you, lady, don't scream. I wouldn't mind shooting. Roy will come through this somehow. He's got to. Put the gag back on and toss her into Toro Tornado's pen. He'll be back in a minute. But someone else got here first. What? Huh? I'll take What's that it? gun. Oh, look, Pat, oh, oh, grab the other one. We got him. Oh, Roy, Bullet brought you here. I knew he would. Get the dog off. Get him away. That's enough, Bullet. Hang on to him, Pat. Gladly. Hey, I recognize this fellow from the rip in his pants. Dale, what's happening down here? Jerry, Roy, Pat, these men are trying to get Jerry's ranch. There's gold there, and they gave the Bronco and the Brema something that made them wild. And I've got evidence of the whole thing. Uh, no, 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 quiet, you two. No. If Dale says she has the evidence, she has. And before we turn you over to the police, well... <coughs> that's for what you did to the Bronx. <coughs> that's for what you did to the brain. Yeah, and here's for what you tried to do to Trigger. <coughs> and here's for what you tried to do to Dale. <coughs> and a boy, Pat. Roy? Did you stick on that mad Brahma? Did he? What a ride. It got me my ranch. I may not be able to sit down for a week, Dale. Hey, how did you find out about these men? And what were they... And now, as the final feature of this year's rodeo... Hey, we've got another performance. Let's go. One more appearance by Roy Rogers and Dale Evans, the king of the cowboys and the queen of the west. I'll second the motion. If that fellow only knew... That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again mm -hmm. The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Fellows and girls... Remember Roy's good advice and ask Mom to bring home Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on the front. You'll love Post Sugar Crisp. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at the same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An art brush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. And now, Crinkles, Post's new sugar-coated rice cereal, announces the third week's Name the Pony Contest winner. Congratulations, Bruce Stevens of Chicago, Illinois. You've won a real Palomino pony picked by Roy Rogers. And congratulations, too, to all you thousands of other prize winners in Crinkles' exciting contest. 
Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Howard McNear, Ken Peters, Jack Moyles, and John Storm. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Sugar Crisp. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.